Speedway. Not the most popular of sports, but it is popular when you know what it is. It's simply two riders from each team riding round an oval track four times and gaining points, and the team with the most points at the end of the 15 races wins, with a whole load of screaming and shouting for your team to win. Speedway started a long, long time ago in the 1920s, and in the late 1940s, it actually came to Hastings, and some from very close to me actually went to these matches and has collected m- memorabilia from them. My granddad, Robert Allen Graveling. He's collected such things as photographs, posters, programmes from the meetings, magazines, some things dating back to 1948. That's 62 years ago. I w- what I wanted to find out is how why he went to these matches in the first place and how his passion for collecting this amazing memorabilia came about. We were, I was 16 years old at the time and we, being young people, we had to do something, go somewhere. Um, we had interests such as football and cricket, um, things like that. You played, you had friends and Speedway came to Hastings and um, several of us thought we'd like to go and see what Speedway was all about and a great many other people thought the same idea and uh, we started going. We liked what we saw at the pilot field, the Speedway, it was very interesting, very exciting and we started going regularly and it we went on from there, like you've got football stars today, you, you worship the different football stars and we had our favourites with the Speedway. And uh, on the very first meeting they had, over 5,000 people turned up, so there was a great deal of interest there. And it took off from there, started the idea of collecting souvenirs. I kept one or two souvenirs after the Speedway finished at Hastings, but never really um, took a great deal of interest after that, only in as much as if there were reports in the local paper or anything like that, then uh, I was was still interested. But over the years we found more like-minded people that were also still interested. When Hastings did come to Speedway in 1948, it proved to be very, very popular. And at, at its peak, during perhaps 1949, there was many as 10,000 people there. They had a strong supporters club. Um, in 1948 they had over a thousand members in the supporters club and they had their own newsletter, badges and you could join I think for one and sixpence in those days which what is, might be as much as seven and a half p these days. Eventually Speedway came back to Eastbourne. These clubs in 1936 didn't survive, but in 1947 Speedway came back organised at Eastbourne. Well then in 1948 the promoter Charlie Dugard decided that it would be more beneficial to come to Hastings because they had a much better ground, much better pitch, and a grandstand, which they didn't have at Eastbourne. And then, from then on, this record will start to put together the names of the people that were involved in the Speedway. This was the promoter and the manager and the various stewards that had to do with um, machine examiners and medical officers. All these people were involved. But this, this record, with the bits and pieces I've got in the drawers there, will, I hope, eventually make a history of the Speedway. And the second page denotes the names of the team, who they were, who they rode for, and just a little bit about some of their history. Um, Again, a list of the teams who were competing, where they came from. They all had nicknames. 
placed in Saxons as errors. And then over 49 again, the record of all the officials involved. And it goes on to, I started to make up history of 1949. After that, the league tables again at the end, and then the closure, that what started off as a court case, and I'm hoping to compile evidence of the whole of the hearing of the court case, and the cartoons, various cartoons about taking the mickey about <laughs> why they closed. Before that, we had interest in the riders, just the same as people today look at the football stars. And I tried to find a record of where a picture, where possible, and where these riders went to after they left Hastings, because they all, all bar about a couple, went on to race for other teams. That concluded that little book, and I've marked it up as the history of Hastings Speedway from 1933 to 1949, as I recall with the aid of various Speedway magazines for support. This book, my son bought me for a birthday present, and I say respectfully again, this is a Speedway Bible. It contains British Speedway Leagues from 1946 to 1964 and the short histories, uh, league tables, point scorers and some photographs. And this one is the first Speedway supported booklet that was issued in 1948 and it's got the souvenir booklet. Um, there are in there, there are pictures of certain riders, certain action pictures um, and various bits and bobs all about the team. There's a picture of the crowd, the sort of crowds that used to come. The average sort of crowd was between about seven and 10,000 people, which is a lot of people. Speedway invades Hastings, taken after 1066 and Harold and the Warriors. That was a newsletter. The Neatly Supporters Club, over a thousand people in 1949, and they had their own badge and they issued a quarterly newsletter. 